Hi, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about security. As we know, the industry is using OAuth for securing the applications. The OAuth authentication standards has an authentication flow called ROPC. That is not recommended by Microsoft, but every technique has a use case for it. In this video, we are going to talk about how can we use ROPC flow from an C Sharp application into SharePoint. Let us understand about the ROPC flow. ROPC stands for Resource Owner Password Credentials. In this flow, the resource owner is giving their password to the application and the application is contacting the resource with the password credentials. That is the main reason it is not recommended by the authentication platforms such as Microsoft Azure Active Directory or Microsoft Identity Platform. Here goes the details about ROPC in the Microsoft Identity Platform. Link will be provided in the description. Here you can see Microsoft recommends do not use ROPC flow and they are suggesting to go for a better alternative if available. This is the official link into the ROPC standard. As we see, the resource owner gives the password credential to the application. The application uses that to get the access token to the resource. This is a diagram from the Microsoft Azure perspective. Here the authorization server is login.microsoftonline.com. Here also same flow, user gives a password, the client send that to the token provider and obtain the token. This can be used to access the actual resource. The resource is not mentioned in this diagram, but resource may be a SharePoint site or anything that is protected using Azure Active Directory. If you are using plain HTTP calls, this is the way we can use it. It is an HTTP POST request. Here are the parameters. Client ID is a app registration ID, the scope, the username, the secret and the grant type. Here please note that we are not passing any certificate or password of the app registration. Here only the ID of app registration has been used. Then the credential is the user credential. Now let us see what is the scenario ROPC can be used. It again depends upon use case to use case. Also depends upon specific security requirements of our projects or our clients. In this particular scenario, we have an application for document management. This application has uh, two parts. One is a document management single page application that uses uh, Angular and an API which is using ASP.NET and Web API. The use case is very simple. Customer had to upload the document and download the document. The backing repository is SharePoint. In a normal scenario, we can use an app registration. That app registration can be part of the SharePoint.com. The application can use that to interact with the SharePoint. The problem with app registration giving access to the SharePoint is it may get the full access into SharePoint.com. In our scenario, our client, they don't want to use the app registration into the SharePoint.com because there are different projects and they all share the same Active Directory. So individual projects cannot get an app registration added to the SharePoint.com. Hence, we had to go for a service account. That service account will have a permission to specific SharePoint websites. So when the Document Management API want to interact with the SharePoint.com, it first uses the AAD to obtain the access token. In order to obtain the access token, it uses ROPC flow. Once it has the access token, it can access the SharePoint.com using the Graph API. If you are wondering how this diagram has been created, it is not drawn, it is written. In the left side, you can see the uh, source code of the diagram. Type the diagram, diagram will be created on the right side. This is called planned UML. If you want to get more details about uh, how to draw with planned UML, there is a separate video on that. I will be giving the link in the description. This is a SharePoint website we will be accessing. In the POC, we will be just uh, reading the site name using the ROPC flow. In order to run the POC, we need an app registration, which you can see here, ROPC flow. This don't have any certificate or secrets because we don't need any certificate or secret. We are using the service account credentials. This is a service account we'll be using for accessing the SharePoint. Service account is nothing but an user account in the Active Directory. And that user has access to SharePoint resources that we need to access from the application. Here is the source code of the POC. Before we go to the code walkthrough, let us run the application. Here there are some options. We will be concentrating on the first option. We are using Graph API to list the root site. We will give the option 1. It will be obtaining the access token using the ROPC flow. Then it will be hitting the SharePoint using the Graph API. This is just uh, retrieving the name of the site. 
communication site you can see the same title what we have seen in the ui now let us dig deep into the code it's a console application it has a menu here you can see this is option what we have just run i am using a library called ec menu so that uh, we don't need to write a lot of code this line says when it is running and user select option one execute uh, this function let us go to this function so from this function it is getting an sharepoint manager factory and getting one object then it says list root site why i created a factory is like there are multiple ways to interact with the sharepoint one way is uh, using graph api another way is using pnp framework the factory will create the object based on the interaction type so if we go to the get we can see based on the enum value graph api it will create a graph api based sharepoint manager coming back let us go to the list root site of the graph api based sharepoint manager here we can see it is creating a graph client and it is making a request then outputting the values what is retrieved from the web request now let us see what is in the get graph client this is a place where it is creating the object that interact with the graph here we need the access token this is a place of interest if we go here get access token there is again one more abstraction because we can interact with the Azure AD using primitive HTTP or we can use the MSL library here I am using the MSL library MSL based authentication manager and this as a method called get access token async this is a place the ROPC flow works when this method is getting called it gets a app builder it is a public client application and it is calling the acquire token silent this acquire token silent will be retrieving the token from the cache if it is available else it will throw an exception and it will come here msl ui required exception here we acquire the token using the username and password i hope this area is straightforward querying the token using username and password this is a scope scope is a little tricky graph.microsoft.com slash dot default this is a service account name and this is a service account secure password and we get the JW token. Another one to notice what is this lazy application and value. This is a MSL specific thing. MSL works little differently than the primitive HTTP methods. Here is a app builder, public client application builder dot create. This is a app registration ID and this is a tenant ID and we are building. This is a modern fluent API which is easy to uh, read and reason about. Once we create the public client application builder and build the application object, application object uh, here it is, i public client application, we can obtain the token. One thing to notice is like it is a public client application. This means when we create the app registration, we have to make sure that it is public. This is a setting for that. Here you can see it is set as public. They already provided better hints about when to make it public, such as this ROPC flow. Coming back to the application, let us see how the configurations are done. So here you can see when we create a public line application, it uh, requires configuration such as app registration ID and tenant ID. Here it is using a static property. It is nothing but uh, exposing the configuration properties from the app settings. Now, if we go to the app config, these are the values uh, needed by the application. We need an service account name and the password in clear text. This has to be later converted into secure string. Of course, we need the Azure Active Directory tenant ID, Azure Active Directory app registration ID, and the site root URL. So once we have this many details, uh, we can query the SharePoint using ROPC flow to obtain the root site details. For the time being, don't worry about whatever we are seeing here. This will be used in the upcoming videos for a different use case. This POC has been checked into the GitHub. Of course, without uh, these configuration values, the URL to the GitHub project will be given in the description. Please go ahead and check out the POC. In case of any queries, uh, please add the comments. As always, uh, if you like these videos, please like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.